For our new unit, we're going to be talking about matter. And we're going to begin by actually talking about what matter is. It's a term that we use a lot in science, but it's important to understand exactly what we mean if we say we have matter. And if we look at everything on our planet, everything in the universe, it's going to be made up of either matter or energy. And energy, of course, would be the things like light, heat, sound, um, we talk more in the next unit about energy as just being the ability to do work. But matter is basically all the things that we can, you know, physically touch and manipulate. And all the matter and energy in the universe is kind of at a constant amount. We can't create it, we can't destroy it. But matter and energy can constantly and is constantly being changed, manipulated, and transformed. So when we actually talk about matter, we're simply talking about anything that has mass and takes up space. That's kind of the most concise definition of matter, is these two properties, having mass and occupying space. So when we talk about mass, we're actually just talking about the amount of matter that's in an object. If we looked at all the atoms, all the molecules that make something up, that would be how much stuff is in it, so to speak, and that would actually be the mass. Now, to give us kind of constant units to measure by, we actually, in science at least, use the metric system, so we would measure mass in grams or kilograms. Uh, of course, in standard, you know, American units, we would measure it in ounces or pounds. Volume, on the other hand, actually describes that second property, the amount of space that matter takes up. So, the larger an object is, the larger its volume. The smaller an object is, the smaller its volume. And we can measure volume for any material, whether it be a solid, a liquid, or a gas. Of course, solid objects, we would use the measurement of cubic centimeters. Um, liquid, when we measure it, we might use a graduated cylinder and measure in milliliters. Now, there are three commonly occurring states of matter. And basically, these are just different forms that a substance can exist in. And the first is a solid. That means the molecules are packed tightly together. And they're packed so tightly that a solid object will actually have a fixed shape. I can take this bottle here and I can, you know, set it on the table. I can set it off to the side. I can throw it across the room. But its shape will be constant because this bottle is made out of solid plastic. The liquid in the bottle, on the other hand, is a liquid, which is our second state. And liquids actually take the shape of the container they're in. If I turn the bottle, the liquid will shift, it'll adjust, it'll change its shape because the molecules are able to move more freely. And the third state of matter is a gas, which basically means the molecules are spread even farther apart so that they can actually expand to fill a container that they're placed in. The air in our room fills up the whole room. Even though we might could spread it out more, we might could compress it, it's going to spread to just fill whatever container it might be in, whether it be a bottle or a large room or something even like Earth's atmosphere. Matter can change from one state to the other, and these changes are fairly common. And basically, all that's required to change the state of matter is a change in heat energy. And for instance, if we take a cube of ice and place it on a table in a warm room, that ice will go through a process called melting that changes it from a solid ice cube into liquid water. If we take water and put it on a pot in the stove, that liquid water, as we heat it, would actually gain more heat energy and change from a liquid to a gas. And that's that steam that we see coming off when water boils. That process is called boiling. Gases that cool can change to a liquid through the process of condensation. And liquids, for instance, if we take a cup of water and put it in the freezer, it's going to freeze into solid ice. So that's this idea of changes in matter, changes in state, occurring as a result of changes in temperature. 